následující prezentace. Sám jsem velice zvědav, jak to, jak to bude probíhat, protože v tomto roce de facto někdy v Dubnu se objevil na trhu simulátor, který se jmenuje Despray Debra. Je to simulátor, který je produktem společnosti Adam Rulli z Velké Británie. A v podstatě tento model simuluje de facto vyproštění již zestoupeného plodu při císařském řezu. Já když jsem diskutoval tento model s mnoha porodníky, tak vím, že na to existují dost rozporuplné pohledy, protože část říká, že to je situace kritická, ke které by vůbec docházet nemělo, nicméně k ní dochází. Takže já jsem poprosil pana Perika Čadova, který je přímo z firmy Adam Ulivy, aby nám tento model představil a aby ho představil zejména z pohledu toho, proč takový model vůbec vznikl, co toho výrobce vedlo k tomu, protože určitě to není tak, že někdo sedí za stolem, nemá co dělat, tak my si aha, tohle by byl model. Určitě musí ten tlak většinou vyvstat ze strany těch uživatelů, musí říct, ale nám by se hodilo, kdyby takový model tady byl zvolen, to si myslím, že je ta reálnější cesta. Takže dovolte mi pozvat pana Čerova, Zase to proběhne v angličtině a určitě bude možnost. Dobrý den. Jsem nejen lektor v angličtině, ale jsem rád, ale jsem rád, aby se mohli Můj jmen je Tariq Shahab, jsem sales a marketing manager z kompaní v United Kingdom, kterou jsem Rudy. Teď vám řekl něco o I just love you and to do it with your phone. Okay. But maybe you can do one more here. Okay, one more please. Right, just this one. So uh <coughs> yeah, Adam Rudy, um it's it's uh, a very privilege to be working for a company that is uh, a very old company. The company is uh, 94 years old, was established in 1918. And um, originally the company was uh, in the business of uh, supplying medical colleges with uh, skeletons, the real bone skeletons. And uh, this is how the company started and then it evolved and as time went on, uh, medical training simulators started and uh, here we are today. So we are manufacturing and distributing uh, clinical skills simulators, anatomical models and the educational um, charts for doctors and nurses and medical schools. Um, we are uh, <coughs> exporting, we are exporting in um, many countries around the world. We appoint uh, distributors, so we have companies that we have as partners in different uh, countries. and. Um, uh, here in the wonderful country of the Czech Republic, our partners are Halego, and we have been uh, working with Halego now for over 10 years, I would say probably about 12, 14 years. So a long relationship, and uh, we're very, very happy with it. The next uh, slide. <coughs> okay. So Desper Debra. Desper Debra um, <coughs> was a uh, model that uh, we were approached by um, some people in Guy's and St. Thomas's Hospital in uh, London, and uh, they um, approached us with a, what they called a problem. And the problem was that the um, impacted fetal head situation, where a baby's um, the head is stuck in the pelvic bone, uh, can be quite critical. It doesn't happen much. It's not a common situation. But when it does happen, it's very bad. And it is, a, it, it is an emergency situation. So. Uh, Key features of the model was uh, are that it's a highly realistic trainer for delivery of the impacted um, feet of head by the cesarean section. Um, it's an easy to use model, very easy to set up because there are no electronic parts, so there's no need for any. You can transport it and use it anywhere you want. It's very easy to set up, very easy to use. The model, uh, the head of the baby inside the model has palpable fontanelles. It has palpable fontanelles, which is obviously very critical when you're in a situation like this. The 
amount of pressure or force you put on the baby's head is very important um, and you don't want to um, put too much or exert too much pressure because obviously you will um, damage the baby and that's uh, obviously not a good situation. Uh, the model allows you, it's, uh, the head is actually on a spring, so the model allows you to adjust the level of impaction. So you can make the force very hard, if you make it, you know, winding it, it will become very hard, and then you can even you know, make it easier depending on how, much, how you want to train the student. Um, obviously, and the head has um, a flexion gauge, so uh, there is a gauge for the flexion to make sure you are not over flexing the head and again um, damaging the baby. Okay. Just some statistics. Now, with statistics, uh, obviously we are in the UK, so the statistics that we have are based on facts in, in, in the United Kingdom. But often with these things, um, wherever, whichever country you are, depending on the population, some of these may vary, but uh, let me tell you why the situation is there. They um, have done some studies, obviously, which have shown that there's approximately 200,000 cesarean sections in the UK every year, and 10% of these are at full dilation. So obviously at the point at which the baby is about to um, be born. So therefore, there's a potential of 20,000 births per year to be affected by an impacted fetal head scenario. So this um, means that obviously 20% uh, of the 200,000, uh, 20,000 possible situations where something like this can happen. That, that's what these things are saying. The whole problem with the impacted fetal head is that it doesn't happen much. Yeah. When a doctor or a healthcare professional is in a situation where they are faced or they have this situation in front of them, normally it is the first time they have ever seen it. So it's very difficult for them to say, so it's very difficult for professors or teachers to teach students how can you deal with this situation. This is why um, the guys in um, St. Thomas's Hospital in London and the medical schools around London said to us, you know, we need something. We need a model which we can actually use to teach our students what can happen in this situation. Because we don't want a situation where, you know, a doctor is uh, uh, in the maternity ward on night duty, a fully qualified doctor. The midwife comes and says, um, I have a situation, um, I think the baby's stuck, they do a caesarean section, the doctor goes in, he touches the um, baby and he realises I have an impacted head. He's never done it before. This is often the situation, he's never done it before. The mother and the baby will be very lucky if they find a doctor who has done this before. This is what uh, we've been told by that. So, as you can see, what I've just said is in the figure, 70% of surgeries have personal experience and difficulty in delivering the impact of fetal head. 80% of the above group encounter serious uh, maternal or fetal neonatal morbidity, so death, which is obviously terrible, um, associated uh, again with the delivery of an impact of head. So again, I've already said some of these points. Yeah. That uh, a fetal impacted head, there's no warning. It just happens. Simple fact. Yeah. Um, I already said about the surgeons in the middle of the night and doctors, they're finding this is happening. And uh, again, they find um, you know, that it's a new for some kind of a training opportunity. The main um, point I'm making with these, 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 these uh, points here is that um, there is always a need for protocol. Um, I'm sure you all agree that there's always a need for protocol. Training in anything that we do, um, companies that are selling all of these models, the whole objective that we are trying to achieve is to introduce a system where there's a problem. Healthcare professionals, doctors, nurses, uh, midwives, they have approached us and they say, we have a problem. Can you, as Adam Rudy, Limson, things or any other company, 
can you help us to design a model that we can then use to train our students so then we can have some kind of defined protocol or system when there is um, you know, an issue of some sort. So that's uh, what we did with these people. So one more slide. Uh, this is a photograph of the uh, team that was involved in developing the pr product. Um, you won't know them, but let's uh, just sort of uh, list the people. Um, Dave Graham Heidman, who's a uh, consultant in Oxford and Oxford and Dining in uh, Scotland, in the United Kingdom. Hazel uh, Shannon, who's a uh, uh, Oxford Dining consultant and professor also at St. Thomas in London, which is next to Big Ben. And uh, Annette Riley, who's also at St. Isaac's and Thomas's Hospital. So these people were involved in developing the product. They came to us with the idea. We developed it with them. We are talking probably about uh, nearly three years of discussions, changes, the whole process. It takes a long time, but uh, that's what happened. And then a few other people there are from our company, our product uh, development manager, and um, our product manager as well. So if we can uh, move on to the next one. Okay, I'm just going to show a film now because I think you're probably fed up of me speaking English, so you want to see something visual, so this will be better. So this uh, guy in the video is uh, Professor Andy Shannon. He's just going to show you a little bit about that. Uh, Long the baby's head. Getting to grips with the latest innovation in obstetrics. This is very difficult. Her name is Desperate Deborah, a first-of-its-kind simulator training doctors here at London's St. Thomas's Hospital in dealing with late-stage emergency caesareans. The lifelike pregnancy simulator replicates a real woman in distress during a procedure that affects around 20,000 births a year in Britain. Lots of gel is needed. Professor Andrew Shannon is part of the team who developed Desperate Deborah so named to reflect the potential seriousness of her situation. Mannequin with lots of gel. Across the board, maybe one in three women now are getting a caesarean, and a majority of those are emergency, meaning they're done during labor. And frequently, they're done at night when senior doctors aren't always available. Nicola Vuston is one of the trainees learning firsthand what an emergency C-section entails. And natural defects. Having a simulation model where you can practice it um, in a very safe environment, I think is a, a great thing because that situation definitely does arise where junior doctors haven't got the support around them that they need and they're in a difficult situation. Desperate Deborah simulates how a baby's head may get stuck in the pelvis because the mother is in the advanced stages of labour. The head needs to first be freed from impaction in the pelvis before delivery. But the sheer force needed carries the risk of injuring both mother and baby. OK, so that was on the easiest setting. <laughs> it's, it's really hard work. I don't know if you can see my arm shaking on the camera. Um, but it was, I felt a bit like my fingers might break. Um, um, my arm was quite tired. I don't think I could do it more than a couple of times. We came up with this design and everybody was happy with the way it looked, the way it felt, the, the touch, the feel. Gabriel Ogwo from manufacturers Adam Rooley says the difficulty of delivery can be adjusted by a series of levers and dials. The baby's head replicates the soft tissue of an infant skull, teaching the degree of force needed for freeing the baby without harming mother or child. Professor Shannon, who himself has delivered thousands of babies, says Desperate Deborah is a crucial training tool now more than ever with caesareans on the rise. Well, we know across the board that caesareans are increasing everywhere. And also, these difficult caesareans are increasing with the trend towards not attempting assisted vaginal deliveries. Um, so it, it doesn't matter where you go, where there are women having babies, this simulator has the potential to assist and aid you know, safe practice. How did you find it? Difficult. I don't think it would be a bad baby. <laughs> And with junior doctors able to get as much practice as they need, there's every expectation that Desperate Deborah will serve as an effective model for successful caesarean deliveries in the real world. Okay, so just to summarise um, the thing in the video, you actually saw uh, the model being used, and uh, some of the um, things I just want to mention is. Uh, <coughs> No simulator 
Um, I've been in this business for a little while, and I know that no simulator will be exact. Yeah. The idea is to practice something um, in terms of trying to have the approach or the protocol. The feel of the simulator is meant to be as realistic as possible, but every scenario is different. Every woman is, uh, when they're giving birth to a baby, they are a different shape, a different size, a different degree of um, you know, difficulty is, is, is going to be experienced. But the idea of the simulator is that it gives an idea of how it feels to actually um, be encountered for, you know, with this situation. So um, we do believe that it gives a unique training opportunity. Um, the model has been designed and developed with experts in fetal medicine in the United Kingdom. Uh, and we were very lucky to be working with a team like that. And um, I've already mentioned it's portable, there's no electronics, it's easy to use. And, um, you know, we're here today, we've got an opportunity to try the model. It's outside, I have gloves, I have gel, and we're ready to go. So I hope you get a chance to try the model and uh, make your own conclusion. <coughs> Thanks for listening. V podstatě, jenom abych to shrnul, tak určitě jste postřehli, že důvodem je nácvik situace, která vůbec není obvyklá. Tak jak jsme se bavili o tom, že se jedná o situaci, které by dojít nemělo, přesto k ní dojít může. A když už k ní dojde, tak se najednou zjistí, že poblíž není nikdo, kdo by s touto situací měl zkušenosti. Proto je dobré, aby porodník udržoval svoje znalosti i tím, že bude čas od času trénovat. Nevím, jestli někdo z vás zkušených by byl ochoten tomu věnovat ten čas a třeba si najít do ty učební a vyzkoušet si to opakovaně, ale je to, je to způsob, jak se udržovat vlastně třeba hluboko v tom problému. Já bych možná využil toho, že pan docent Košner před blokem přednášek si sám vyzkoušel Tenhle ten model, s panem docentem, jaký z toho máte pocit, jak byste to hodnotil? No tak mě se líbil ten model na ten koncept, a víte, ten, co se vyhovuje, ta hlavička. Já jsem to říkal, především ve skutečnosti je to lehčí než na tom modelu. <laughs> Model je to těžký, tam se špatně kontrolovalo teda držení těch kleští, ale jinak si myslím, že by to bylo dobrý takový model mít, ale asi by nebylo nutné to mít v každý nemocnici, ale kdyby bylo tady někde centrálně, tak by tam mohli se vždycky podívat, aby to bylo vyučitý, jo, protože cena je poměrně vysoká, takže my kdybychom to tady měli, tak uh, bychom to nevyužili, nebo bych nám museli jít. Mohl by být vrací a jezdit se z celé republiky, jo, to bylo vůbec, vůbec ideální, uh, uh, ale uh, je to jistě dobrý trénování. Jinak mi tam ukazoval doktor Kalousek ten, jaksi ten nejstarší model náš, který tady byl, i když jsem já studoval, to znamená, ten tady už je od roku 65 a musím říct, že byl velmi dobrý. Jo? A je velmi dobrý. My máme i tady ty modely a oni nevydrží materiálově nájezd těch studentů. No? Takže se často jako trhají a je to jako problém, nebo musí tam být pořád učitel, který to hlídá, jako ty veliky, co vlastně s tím dělají. Ale jinak ty trenažery jsou výborní, jako jen víc trenažery, to není pochyb. Trénovat se to musí. To. I každá taková přednáška má významný, když to všechno známe, tak se to člověk vyrobí znovu, když o tom přemýšlí, když je ten problém a jak to dělat. Takže je to jenom pořád. Takže určitě děkuji moc za příspěvek. Určitě je to i o tom, že pořád ty materiály jsou lepší a lepší. Samozřejmě ten model zůstane vždycky modelem a silikonem zůstane silikonem, ale výrobci určitě se snaží přicházet s inovativními řešeními, jak to udělat, aby ten model sloužil co nejdéle, ale vždycky je to jenom přístroj a záleží, jak se k němu bude chovat, jak se k němu bude přistupovat. Já děkuji uh, Tarikovi, pokud teda nejsou k modelu žádné dotazy, jste srdečně zvláni potom si to vyzkoušet.